So I'm going to show you this question now, which came from a paper in June 2014. It was another ACCN2 one, so under the old specification, but it's another company income statement, and it's very, very similar to the um, Yarnold one. In fact, it almost looks like it's been cut and pasted with one or two numbers changed, um, and instead of a bonus issue, this time it's a rights issue. So I thought I'd just do a quick run through. It's not a difficult question. The scenario is exactly the same as a female accountant. She's away sick from work. And um, for some reason, they've decided to ask us to, uh, to finish the income statement and the statement of changes in equity. So we've got a list of balances. And again, you need to be able to discriminate between things that belong in the income statement, things that belong on the statement of changes in equity and things that you can afford to ignore um, completely. Now, this time we haven't got to work out the depreciation. If you have a look here down the list of balances, we've got a non-current asset at cost. We've got a provision for depreciation of 446. 880. But if you have a look up here, we've got the depreciation charge for the year. So that's the one we want to be putting on the income statement. The provision for depreciation is the one that goes on the statement of financial position. So she's managed to do that before she's gone off sick. Um, a couple of things that we maybe haven't seen before, we've got director's remuneration in here. Now that's just a fancy word for salary or wages. That's actually going to be an expense um, on the income statement. Um, let's have a look. We've got Debenture interest, that's going to be our finance costs. And again, we'll just check that that is 6% of the debenture, which is £36,000. So they've paid all the interest. That's going to go on the income statement as well. We've got an interim dividend of £120,000. And I'm just looking to see if there are any other expenses we need to take into account. I don't think there are. I think it is just the... Um, they've already... Let's have a look at what they've done. Let's have a quick look at how much has already been completed on the income statement. Yeah, so if we have a look there, we've already got marketing, admin and distribution expenses. So all we're going to have to do is add in there the director's remuneration. So we've got, um, if we have a look here, this is the director's remuneration that was given up here, the salary, £240,000. So we'll just stick that in there. And the depreciation expense, so remember the charge for the year is the bit we want, not the provision. Provisions always go on the statement of financial position, not in the income statement. So let's have a look there. Charge for the year, 257780. So we can now add all of those expenses up. I've actually worked this out already. So it's 1138660. So you don't have to sit here watching me bash away on my calculator. Um, so that is going to be taken away from our gross profit up here. We've got the gross profit to give us the profit from operations. So that's going to give us £574,940. We then need to put in the finance costs. So that will be our debenture interest. If you remember, Back here, it's going to be 6% of the 600,000 debenture, which is £36,000. That's going to come off of there to give us our profit for the year before tax. Such a lot of writing with these questions. Um, so 538940, isn't it? Then we're looking for the tax. So taxation for the year ended 30th of April. 2014. That's the figure that goes on the income statement, 107,788. 107,788. And that will give us the profit for the year after tax. Okay, so let's take that away. That's going to give us 431,152. So that's the figure that's going to go off onto the statement of changes in equity in a moment. So um, let's have a look at the other information we were given about the statement of changes in equity. So um, statement of changes in equity, if you remember, we've got a column for everything that's in the equity section. Now this time there is a total column, which is a bit of a nuisance because we can waste quite a lot of time just kind of adding across. Um, but this one was worth 16 marks. I think the likelihood these days is that you wouldn't be given this total column. That would be, you know, not included. Um, in real life, there would be a total column. Um, um, and it is, I suppose, a useful cross-check. You can check that the, the cross numbers and the, the down numbers tally so that this figure here is the total of everything that's in this column and everything that's in this row. 
Um, so as always with the statement of changes in equity, we're going to start it at the first day of the financial year. The year ended 30th of April 2014, so it started on the 1st of May 2013. So we're going to pick up the balances here. We've got issued share capital. Now this time it's 20p shares. We've got £1.2 million worth. So let's put some pound signs in here because remember we've always got to be flicking between the monetary value and the number of shares. So 1.2 million pounds worth of shares, but they're 20p shares. So if we divide that by 0.2 or times it by five, because if they're 20p shares, it's five for one pound. So if you yeah, want to buy five, that would cost you a pound. So multiply it by five, and that's going to give us six million ordinary shares. Okay, so we've got six million ordinary shares in there. Um, we need to deal with any issue of shares. So if we have a look at the information down at the bottom here, it tells us that the directors made a rights issue. Now this is the one that does raise money. So it's where you write W-R-I-T-E to your existing shareholders, offering them the chance to buy additional shares in the company. Um, the beauty of this is that you don't need to advertise it like you would with a, you know, a subscription to the general public, an issue of shares to the uh, general public. So we can write to our existing shareholders and provided everyone takes up their rights and buys the shares that they're offered, there's no issue with um, control. The trouble starts if some people sell rights to each other. Um, so if you just remember the, the pitfalls of, of issuing shares, so loss of control is one, if, but only if not everybody takes up their, their rights. So back to this then, it says that the issue was made on the basis of one new share for every three. So one over three, that's the same as in the Yarnold question. So what we need to know is how many shares there are at the moment. We had six million of them, remember 1.2 million pounds worth, 20p each. So times six million is two million new shares. Okay, now the thing with the new shares is that they are being issued at a price of 35p. Now we need to split that between the ordinary share capital, which is 20p, and the difference is the share premium, which is 15p. So that's the 35p issue price minus the 20p nominal value. Okay, so it's really important. We can't just shove 35p times 2 million in there um, because at any one time, we always need to be able to work out what the issued share capital is. And that's because we might do further rights or bonus issues, or we might pay dividends and we need to know how many shares there are rather than the total value of shares. So any extra, any excess above the um, nominal value of the shares when we issue them is classed as share premium. So what we need to do is do 20p times 2 million which by my reckoning is £400,000. And then the excess, the 15p per share times 2 million is another £300,000. So if we were doing the whole statement of financial position, we would be debiting the bank, just to remind you of the double entry there, with £700,000. That's the total amount received from selling the shares. We're only interested in the bottom half, this statement of changes in equity. So we can now pop that in here, issue of shares. So the rights issue is raised £400,000 and then £300,000 there. Now what we need to do obviously is look and see what the, uh, the share premium was brought forward because we haven't put that in yet. So we already had £300,000 at the start of the year. So that's now increased to £600,000 and the issued share capital has gone up from £1.2 million to 1.6 million. So obviously we need to make sure we put, let's just complete this, the retained earnings in 876,590. 876,590. And then what we need to do is make sure we fill in the total column. So if we add all of those three together, the 1.2, 300,000, and the 876,590, we get 2376,590. The issue of shares has increased equity overall by 700,000. We've got our profit for the year, the after tax one. So if you remember, let's dig out the income statement, go back to that. It was 431152 on there. 431152, 431152. See how boring it gets doing the total column, just duplicating the numbers. And then we've got to work out dividends that have been paid during the year. Now remember, if we've got a mixture of interim and final dividends, we need to add them all together. Now, if we look at the list of balances, we have an interim dividend of 120,000. 
Um, but at the end, they've paid a final dividend of 2p a share. So let's work out what that is. 2p a share on the 6 million we had at the start and the 2 million new ones. So we've got 8 million shares, I reckon is 160,000. So if we add that to the dividend that's paid up here, we've paid a total of 280,000 and that's coming out of our retained earnings column. We can only pay dividends from the retained earnings. We can't pay them from anything else. So we've now got the balance at the 30th of April 2014. So we've got 1.6 million pounds in there. We've got 600,000 in there. And if we add that one, plus the uh, profit for the year, minus the dividends, we're left with 1 million and 27,742 pounds. And then if we add these four figures up, we get 3, 2, 2, 7, 7, 4, 2, which should agree to the total of those three. So that figure there can be reconciled in both directions, what we call cross-casting, making sure that it adds up downwards and going across. So that's the beauty of a total column, but it is extra work um, and it doesn't really test much other than your ability to add up large numbers. So um, I think by and large, we can expect there not to be a total column. So just watch out for that. Um, so hopefully that's given you an idea of how to deal with um, a rights issue. Um, if you've enjoyed this video, please remember to subscribe to my channel, watch out for some more um, input towards your paper one exam coming up on the 6th of June. Uh, but in the meantime, thank you for watching and uh, see you again soon.